Hello everybody, welcome back. I am very excited to finally share with you the long-awaited um, video of how I balance Street Woman Fighter and um, finishing uni. It was a very challenging six months, um, but we did make it through and it was super rewarding. So hopefully I can share with you guys some life balance tips. I know a lot of you guys are entering into uni um march tis the season tis the time of the year if not you could be watching this later on and it's fine you know it's something to come back to refresher or just not watch this at all okay so i have my top 10 tips here for you guys first tip would be to visualize your year so you would um, highlight the different areas some are going to be more dance heavy some are going to be more uni heavy being able to see that kind of prepares your brain to um, understand and know what you're kind of going into instead of having the whole year be like this huge insurmountable task it just breaks up um, your struggle <laughs> your struggles it breaks up uh, your year in like more manageable blocks and you kind of get a break from both at different times tip number two I have a favorite app that I always use which is called Todoist uh, I have 18 items on my Todoist app right now and pretty much what happens is anything any thought that I have during the day um, about things that I want to make sure I remember or new tasks that pop up I will go on my to-do list add it as a task and you can input the date as well and the priority so after you input the date it actually won't appear in your current to-do list until the actual date comes if you haven't done your tasks for example it'll show up as red on top and says overdue when when you said you were going to do it by and if you know you want to reorganize the timing of when things are due you can also for example organize clothes that was a week ago and i still haven't done that so it says 23rd of feb i'm going to click on that and then i can choose when i would realistically be able to do that next so it's not like hanging hanging there for me to see and feel guilty about and of course, it is then up to you to make sure that you actually complete the tasks that you set out to do. Complete the tasks you set out to do. Mind myself. When you are balancing so many different things at once, uh, you don't want everything to be in your head. Do not rely on your brain. Do not rely on your brain to remember everything because you probably won't and you will forget something and it's super frustrating especially if it's important and you knew you could have just saved yourself time and trouble and struggle if you just had written it down somewhere and it's really helpful to have just one place where you kind of like dump all of your things to do instead of multiple places because again hard to keep track okay so tip number three is to have your three main goals or objectives three main goals or objectives for the day um, and have someone, you or your partner or an accountability partner call you out for it if you don't do it. So when you know clearly what your goals are and what your top three tasks are for the day, you can call yourself out on them or have your accountability partner call you out on them when you are procrastinating because at the start of the day, you have told yourself this is what's most important. So if you refuse to do that and do anything else, uh, yeah, you gotta give yourself a little slap. Nope, go back to the hard task, go back to the most important task. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely thank my boyfriend for being my accountability partner last year when I, I would tell him this is what I'm gonna do and then he will call me out on it <laughs> if I don't do them. So tip number four, we have, oh, this is a really, really good one. Um, batching up related tasks. So back when I was balancing studying and having a studio with a dance studio with my mum. Um, I thought that oh you know like when you're tired from study you can just go dance it out and when you're tired from dancing you can go study it out but the truth is task switching between different flows actually wastes your time and energy and what I mean by that is when you're doing something creative you're using the creative part of your brain and when you suddenly go from that to having to do something logical or something systematic or something you know uh, that's not creative at all 
It takes a while for you to get out of the creative flow and into, say, a logical flow. When I used to do computer programming, it's a very much different flow to how you are when you are, for example, creating dances or learning a dance or other creative kind of pursuits. I learned that ah, you can burn yourself out pretty quickly when you are constantly switching from one flow to the next. You don't give yourself enough time to get into that deep, uh, deep state of focus to generate some good work. So make Make sure to batch up your day so for example what I find really helped me was having days where it was just studio work related so dance studio related work that could be teaching that could be creating choreography for my kids um, whatever it is it all falls under for example Tuesday Friday Saturday Sunday and then I would have three days designated to um, just my studies and my uni degree so it would be monday wednesday thursday of just okay do no dancing i do no i don't even think about the studio all i do is i just study i do my assignments i make sure i'm on top of all my papers um study 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 computer science computer science computer science and that way you wake up in the morning and you kind of stay in that flow for the whole day and you get way more work done than if you were trying to switch between this left right and center so this helped me a lot and i hope that if you're able to do that as well for example if you're someone with a lot of meetings put all of your meetings in one day <sighs> speaking so much okay oh number five so this could be bad for some people but good for others and it is to take naps okay so personally I do love naps they treat me right yeah when I have a nap I wake up feeling refreshed more energized my brain feels more alert and I'm able to be more efficient okay sometimes and again there's a fine line here you have to know when you are being lazy and procrastinating and not wanting to do your work or when you're truly so tired that you are like chugging along at five percent of your energy levels because when you're in that state it'll take you like five times the amount of time to actually complete a task then if your brain was working at its optimum and you can just smash it out in like an hour you know yourself best and you have to be honest with yourself uh there are definitely times when i'm like i'm so tired i'm just gonna have a nap but in reality i just didn't want to do the work okay and then there were times when i genuinely like am struggling to keep my eyes open and in those times taking a short 20 minute power nap 20 25 minutes um, and you wake up you are able to focus more deeply into your work and just waste less time because when you're trying to balance a lot of different things like time is money efficiency is key and so energy management is key yeah so when you're tired you're just going to be slow and that is what it is. Everyone is different with naps. Try and see if it works for you. Um, if you wake up feeling groggy and super tired, then that's obviously not the one. Like my sister, for example, she cannot take naps because she'll just keep on sleeping and she'll wake up disoriented like she went into a different universe and then came back. So it's different and it's not commendable for her. Sometimes I do get like that as well, but I have more good naps than I do the bad naps so I just I, I take that risk and I think when you're really tired you're gonna have a good nap and it's gonna help you out personally speaking I don't know everyone's different everyone's different uh, tip number six is to make sure you know what is first priority for you um, so each time I flew over to Korea to film Street Woman Fighter I did no uni at all I would do it on the plane home um, after filming but I made sure that whenever I did go to Korea no uni my mind was solely focused on the show on dancing on being there being present um, and then when you know the, the mission was finished and we were going home that was when I would like start doing my uni on the plane making sure I get into that so I was quite lucky because um, our most intense filming was during the month of June and June was when we had our um, inter semester break so I had no uni at all when we did the hardest three weeks of filming in June so very grateful to the universe for making the times align because I yeah I would have struggled so much if I had 
uni work to worry about while doing the most intense filming for Street Woman Fighter. Um, so that all worked out and then we, you know, came home, had two months off filming in which I got into uni, made sure I did as much as I can before um, we started filming the following missions. And then, so each time we'd go back to Korea for, I think, a week at a time. Every time that happened, I would go to Korea, not do any uni, and then I would come back and I would have like a week of uni to catch up on, which is not too bad. So kind of worked out and then I would focus on uni while I was here and then when I went back to Korea, focus on Street Woman Fighter. Yeah, so Street Woman Fighter was definitely first priority for me. And so I didn't have any trouble not doing uni at all while I was there because Street Woman Fighter was more important. Um, but yeah, knowing that is really helpful. When it comes down to it, you have to accept that you can't give 100% of yourself to everything. Like, if you had to choose, choose that one thing that you really do want to put 100% of effort into. Tip number seven, maintain your physical energy. <laughs> this is a hard one because um, I didn't really maintain my physical health last year, but from when I did do um, IB back in high school, which was again, very intense and hectic high school life, um, I definitely prioritized physical health, so I would make sure to cook myself healthy meals, go for daily walks, um, keep up exercising, get eight hours of sleep, did all this stuff to make sure that my body and mind was functioning at its ap absolute optimum, so that every single time I did a task or I had to learn something, my brain was fully able to absorb everything that it could. Study smart, not study hard. You should study hard, but you will get better results if you study smart, okay? And so that includes making sure that your machine, this beautiful machine over here, your body is running well so that you can be more efficient in literally everything that you do. Have more energy. Having energy to do things, you're just gonna do it better, you know? I would look at these, okay, so there are three pillars of health. I'm sure you guys have heard of this already. Is it three pillars or is it four? Well, for, for me, I have written it down as, you know, um, food, sleep, and exercise. Food includes water, so, you know, you gotta stay hydrated, gals and boys, boys and gals, gals and guys, stay hydrated. So with the food stuff, making sure that you give your body the whole stand, you, you, you know what to do. Eat healthy, exercise and sleep. You hear it from every single person in this world, but everyone talks about it for a reason because if you do it, you will actually notice a difference in how you operate. If you do it for like a consistent amount of time to see a difference. Try and incorporate a little bit of exercise, even if it's just 10 minutes in the morning, you wake up and you like pump it out, do a hundred star jumps or whatnot. Um, and you know, choosing slightly healthier options. You can start small, choose something slightly healthier for lunch or slightly healthier for dinner, or you know, swap out a sugary, thing for fruit, you know, think, things like that. I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a, um, a, a health guru, so I'm just spouting whatever nonsense I have read and watched on the internet. And sleep, guys. Make sure you get at least six hours of sleep. <sighs> sleep makes the brain happy. And you know what's interesting is if you don't sleep, you don't make any new memories. So if you want to remember all that knowledge that you learn in your lectures from uni, if you want them to be absorbed into your brain, you have to sleep, okay? Gotta get that sleep in there, guys. So yeah, I would evaluate um, how you're doing in these three areas, be honest with yourself, and then make a little plan on how you can improve on them, even if it's just by a little bit, you know, start small. And we have tip number eight, Maintain your emotional health. Oh, this is this is a good one as well. I'm sure you guys have all experienced what it's like when you you know you're going through something and this big thing is just like constantly in your mind. It's weighing your heart down, um, and it's just it's eating up a lot of your energy. So same thing. Um, do what you can to address the problem. If it's if there's something that you can do within your control to solve the issue, to make the issue better, whether it's by communication or journaling or um, coming to terms or taking action or making a change, whatever it is to 
help with this difficult situation that you're going through, if you can and you are in control to make a change, try and address it because if you leave it and it's just weighing you down every day, you, of course, it's going to bleed into all the other areas of your life. I am not a professional in this area. I am fortunate enough to not go through anything really um, really difficult in my life but there have been I mean we, we all go through these little things here and there like we all have our different struggles and our different battles that we have within our interpersonal relationships or even with ourselves um, and it's up to you to face it head on and try and come to terms with it or solve it or change it or address it, even just addressing it can help a little bit rather than just completely avoiding the elephant in the room to lighten yourself up if you can. And if not, then obviously there's professional help out there and you should absolutely prioritize your mental health and your emotional health um, instead of really forcing and pushing to do something. But yes, everyone is different. I. I'm not qualified to speak in this area, but I do know that this is something that can make a huge difference into how you can balance everything. Because how can you attend to everything when you can't even attend to what's really holding you down, you know? So, gotta address it. Free up. Free up the vibes. Okay, two more tips. My goodness, I sure do talk a lot. So, we have tip number nine. C's get degrees. Done is better than perfect. When you have so many things to do and you want to do all of them perfectly or you want to do all of them to the best of your abilities, sometimes you just have to be like, you know what? I just need to complete this. It doesn't have to be my best work in the whole wide world. I just have to complete this. And sometimes it's like, you know what? This is only worth 5% of my grade. I just have to complete this. I don't have to get the whole 5%. I just have to get as much as I can. Sometimes the whole perfectionism thing, wanting to do your absolute best and every single thing possible, that's a big load and it's, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure and pressure can definitely stop you from doing anything. And then your pile of things to do just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then the pressure increases and everything increases and you're just like, you know what? May as well just have, you know, who cares at the end of the day? It's very realistic to just accept the fact that you cannot be 100% perfect at every single thing that you have to do because you're, you've spread yourself too thin and that's the reality of it. And yeah, be kind to yourself. Nothing matters that much at the end of the day. That's also a very freeing thing to think about is are you really going to care what grade you got for this particular paper 10 years later? No, you'll only care about the fact that you have a degree. And so all these things that's adding extra stress and pressure and immobilizing you from taking action, let it go. Nothing matters too much at the end of the day. Life is life and it's not that deep. Just, just go get your work done. Just go do it right now. And number 10, the last tip is to celebrate your small wins. Um, honestly, it is not easy to be balancing a lot of different things. I'm sure all of you guys are balancing a crazy amount of things at the same time, which is why you clicked on this video. Um, and just make sure to give yourself a round of applause, you know, pat yourself on the back for every small win that you have, whether it's getting a grade that you're really proud of or um, being able to even just get everything done in a day's time. Ticking off your three main objectives, even just ticking off one objective, you know, like um, you're doing really well uh, and you have chosen to take on all of these different things because you're capable and you um, have big goals and big dreams and you absolutely are capable of achieving them. If they were truly outside of your grasp, you would not be doing it. There are definitely going to be times where you question why you decide to do this to yourself, but it's all for good reason. And you're gonna look back and be so proud of yourself for getting through it. Always remember to enjoy the process because one day you are going to look back and maybe even miss these times, you know. Time flies. 
truly. And so while you are in this period, know that it's not gonna last forever. It will ultimately end at some point. And so enjoy it while it's still here so that you um, don't look back and regret not being fully present in the moment. Thank you guys so much for listening to me blabber on about stuff. Again, I am nowhere near perfect. And if you ask my boyfriend and my family and my friends, they'll definitely tell you I have my moments of being an absolute blob. And um, that's okay because at the end of the day, we still made it to the end. And we are filming this video and I still can't believe that you know, this crazy chapter of my life has ended. Um, 2023 was was crazy in the best way possible. And it definitely was very difficult at times. And I learned a lot about myself, um, what my limits are, and also most importantly, what you are capable of, even when you don't think you're able to do it. I feel like um, at the start of the year, my focus was just to finish uni and, you know, um, keep hustling with my studio, with my mom. Never ever thought that an opportunity like Street One Fighter 2 would even come up like crazy, crazy, crazy. I was going to just focus on dance after I had finished uni. Um, but then this opportunity came knocking and I, how can you say no to this? And I did doubt whether I would be able to even do both. I definitely doubted um, if I was going to be sane through all of it um, and I def definitely doubted if I was just going to fail miserably at both. Do terribly at uni, do terribly on the show because I spread myself too thin um, but proved myself wrong and um, yeah and it was the biggest I think growth chapter of my life so far just knowing that um, you can do it, you are capable and if you really push yourself outside of your comfort zone, like you will never regret doing that. Um, and that's where the best things happen. I know everyone says I'm like a broken record, just repeating things that have already been said, but they're such good wisdom nuggets, you know? They are repeated and said for a reason because it's genuinely what, what is true, what is life. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching to the end. Oh my gosh, if you watched this all the way to the end, please raise a hand emoji in the comments down below so I can send this emoji back to you because thank you so much for giving me your time for being here and I really hope that there's something, even just one tip that you can take away um, that can help you make this whole balancing life a little bit easier. If you guys have any, any more questions about studies, about uni, about Street Move Fighter, comment down below and I will actually make sure to reply to you guys on this video. Okay, thank you guys so much um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! -bye.